Okay, good morning, everybody. <clears throat> what is going on, my friends? <clears throat> Excuse me. Welcome to the stream. It is Sunday. It is September 22nd, 2019. And I welcome all of you to today's gameplay stream. What is going on? What's up? What's up? How you doing? I'm doing good. I am ready for an exciting stream. Something completely different that could lead to a lot of new streaming content uh, for us. Okay? This is the first time I'm ever doing anything like this. And I'm very excited to see how this turns out. I hope you guys are pumped for today. Um, you know, good stuff. Very good stuff. Um, so, yeah. Very good. Very good. Alright? So, let's talk, everyone. First of all, I am Dark Side Phil. And if you're at this stream and you weren't expecting me to be here, you're probably at the wrong place. So, I recommend that maybe you change the channel before you're disgusted, revolted, <laughs> and uh, scarred for life, as they say. Alright, so, I'm doing two gameplay streams today, full day of gameplay streaming. I actually shuffled the schedule around a little bit last night. For those who did not check the schedule update that I posted on Twitter, uh, the schedule is different than originally what I had announced on streams these past couple of days. So, FYI, please listen in here so that you guys know exactly what's going on, okay? So, today is the big day, finally, ladies and gentlemen... I'll be covering the Genesis Mini. It's my first day of coverage of the Genesis Mini, okay? I don't know, again, how it's going to go. I've never done a retro console unboxing or anything like this before. I've never, you know, put this into part of my content. There have been other retro consoles before, the NES Mini, the SNES Mini, the PS1 Mini. I never covered any of them, okay? Um, in particular with the Genesis Mini, I think this is going to be exciting because, number one, this is a console that I owned, but I did not own a lot of games for. So I actually know a lot about certain games and about the console, but I never really experienced a lot of the more popular games for the, the console. So there's potential for me to kind of like experience a lot of these games for the very first time. Although some of these games I owned and very much enjoyed. So I'm going to definitely have some insight into some of the games for the library that are in this thing. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I lived, I lived during this era when it was Nintendo versus Sega. Like, that was the console war. There were a few other consoles around, like the TurboGrafx-16 <clears throat> and stuff like that. But really, it was Nintendo versus Sega. When you went to a game rental place, all you saw was Nintendo and Sega. It was pretty intense, okay? So I'm going to be very excited to be not only unboxing this, this Genesis Mini on stream, but hooking it up, exploring... Everything inside of it with all of you. We're going to look at the games library. I'll give you my insight about the different games there. Um, try out some of the games today. So that's going to be the whole stream, FYI. My whole first stream today is going to be exploring the Genesis Mini. Now, if you guys like this and you want to see more of it, I'd consider doing it again tomorrow. Okay? It all depends, I guess, on how stuff goes today with the Genesis Mini. If you guys really like this and you want to see more of it, great. If not, tomorrow we'll just go back to new releases. You know, I could either go back to Borderlands 3 or Link's Awakening tomorrow, depending on what you guys want. And I'm not opposed to doing that if you guys think that the Genesis Mini stuff is kind of, okay, it's good, but, you know, don't want to do it a, a twice in a row. All right. So we're going to see how this goes. We're going to see how this goes, and hopefully you guys are excited for it. Um... Later tonight, I am doing more Modern Warfare beta. Now you might say, well, wait a minute, Phil. You said originally that Sunday night was going to be your Minecraft chill stream. You've been saying this all week. What's going on? Why are you doing the Mo Modern Warfare beta again? Uh, well, the reason is this is the last opportunity to actually play the Modern Warfare beta. I wasn't aware of this, but apparently they're not doing it anymore after this weekend. I actually thought that they were going to do it next week too, but I was mistaken. So I was thinking, oh, I'll do it next week. I'll do the regular multiplayer and then, you know... But no, there's no more beta after this weekend. So what I want to do is I want to play more of that tonight and play the standard multiplayer, not the ground war. Because I played ground war for two hours last night and that was just a chaotic clusterfuck mess. I mean, I can't imagine why anyone's going to be playing that besides they just want a million kills and just a bunch of chaos. Because it's so ridiculously over the top and just nutty. That I don't think anyone's going to get anything valid or quality out of that besides just death, 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 okay? Uh, so I want to play more of the, you know, the, the regular modes tonight. Um, 
for my final session of that beta before the game comes out in late October, okay? So it'll be a good lead, you know, one more month it comes out, the game Modern Warfare, so this will give us a taste of it before it comes out in a month, and then I'll be playing it regularly, we'll get our final taste of the beta, okay? So, yes, um, let's, uh, let's have fun today. Genesis Mini unboxing and exploration and playing some of the games on the first stream, and Modern Warfare Beta later tonight, okay? Now, tomorrow is up in the air, like I told you guys. If you guys enjoy this stream today, and you're like, man, the Genesis Mini stuff was fun. I want Phil to play more of those retro games tomorrow. Then tomorrow, the main gameplay stream will be more Genesis Mini coverage, and we'll just explore more of the library of the Genesis Mini, okay? <clears throat> now, if... After today, you're like, okay, that was fun, but I don't want that as another main gameplay stream. Maybe we'll do it as, like, a chill night stream. That's fine. Tomorrow, we could either go back to Borderlands 3 or Link's Awakening. I'll be honest. I think I'm craving more Borderlands 3 because I now haven't played it in a few days. I just did two back-to-back -back days of Link's Awakening. So, maybe some variety is warranted here. Okay? So, we'll see how this goes uh, tomorrow. Well, I, I really want to judge today's stream and see how today's stream goes and if you guys like it and what you want more of tomorrow. And we'll judge off of that. And, uh, and go from there, okay? Uh, Monday night now will be my weekly Minecraft chill stream. Since I'm not doing it tonight, Sunday night, I'm going to be doing that Monday night, okay? So, Minecraft continues this Monday night. Tuesday is my day off for this week. I know, again, another day that's weird. Oh, my God, it's another day that's not a normal day. Phil keeps changing the day. Yeah, Tuesday is my day off for this week, okay? So, no streaming on Tuesday. Um... Hopefully you guys will get caught up with all the stuff that I've done over the past week on my YouTube channel, DSP Gaming, if you get the chance. All right, and then I'll be back on Wednesday, and on Wednesday, <clears throat> I'll be either playing Borderlands or Zelda, depending on what I did on Monday. All right, so if on Monday I did more Genesis Mini, then probably on Wednesday I'll be doing more Borderlands. If I play Borderlands on Monday, then maybe I'll do Zelda on Wednesday, okay? We'll play it by ear. We'll see what happens. <laughs> then Wednesday night, it's going to be... Uh, a late night chill session of Dragon Quest Builders 2, which I put back into the chill streams rotation. I'm going to try to be playing that at least once a week at, on a late night stream, okay? Thursday, it's the return of Ask the King. This is my bi-monthly Q&A show. Every other month, I do a Q&A show with you guys where you post up your questions on my forums, thekingofhate.com, and I go through them and I answer them. Um, it's going to be a good show. I enjoy doing it every other month, and you guys... Seem to like it, even though earlier this year I kind of told you guys if you guys really don't are interested in it, I would consider canceling the show. You guys kind of abundantly stepped up and said, no, we'd rather have it continue. So if you want to get a chance you can have your question answered on that show, please head over to my forums on the kingofhate.com website. In the forum section, there's a section there for Ask the King. There's already been a thread there for two months. Post up your questions, all right? The more questions I have for the show, the better the show is. <laughs> Because the more, you know, the more to go through, obviously, the better. So please head over there, check it out, and please post up your questions. All right, that's going to be the first stream on Thursday. Thursday night, I'm going to do a late night stream of Genesis Mini. All right, so I'm going to do a first, my first time ever late night stream, chill stream of Genesis Mini. More than likely what we'll do, I'll just, I'll just pull the audience on the stream and say, what do you guys want to see me play? And we'll just pick a game out of the Genesis Mini and play it for a couple hours and see if you guys like it or not. Um, you know, and go from there. Okay? That'll be something pretty fun. Just a random Genesis mini stream in the middle of the week to see how it goes. Uh, on Friday, I'll be playing another one of the games, either Borderlands 3 or um, uh, Link's Awakening. Okay? One or the other. Uh, depending on, you know, how I'm doing with those playthroughs. And Friday night, I think I'm going to do another Genesis mini stream, but this will be a different game. Okay? <laughs> so we'll see what happens with that. Then during the weekend... Things pick up because on Saturday, it's my retrospective marathon event. That is right. It's going to be Saturday, September 28th. I've set it in stone, okay? I figured if I put it on a weekend, more people would be able to attend. So, you know, just under a week from today, marathon event. Where we'll be going back down memory lane. We'll be looking at moments that you guys nominated from my history as a content creator. Whether it's a video game playthrough, a vlog a travel log, um, you know, a game review, any of the things that I put out over the past, you know, 11 years, we're going to be going through and having fun kind of re-experiencing -re that together in a retrospective event. 
I certainly hope you'll join me for that. And make no bones about it, I'm also going to be trying to raise funds that day. Because as you guys know, recently things have been pretty bad financially for me. So a special retrospective event people usually come out for. So I'm probably going to have a tips uh, goal that I'm trying to raise during the course of that stream that day. To help out with that next coming month's finances and everything. Okay? So that's going to be the 28th, Saturday. Then moving on for the rest of the month and into the early October... I'll be continuing on with Zelda and Borderlands, balancing those, um, and, you know, doing my usual chill stream stuff, whether it's, you know, the weekly Minecraft stream, more uh, Dragon Quest Builders 2, or Genesis Mini coverage, okay? Early on in October, we've got the Ghostbusters remake that'll be coming out, and I'm definitely excited for that. That's going to be on Friday the 4th, so that's actually in, what, uh, a little under two weeks from now? Um... And that's really not a re remake, that's a re-release. Re they just remastered it for modern consoles, and I'm excited to check that out, okay? Um, Alright, so, that's the rough schedule. Now, you may have noticed that along there, I did not mention at all, um, at all, the release of Code Vein. And you're absolutely right, I didn't mention the release of Code Vein. The reason is, I'm on the fence about playing it. Um, I played the beta, and I thought the beta was alright. I wasn't in love with the game, but I didn't hate it either. It definitely feels like Dark Souls. Um, although, in the beta, the one thing that stuck out for me was that you had a bunch of weapons at the get-go. Like, you had weapons to start, and you could swap between them, and it would completely change up the gameplay style of the game when you switched weapons. Much like Dark Souls, the difference being, unlike in Dark Souls, you didn't need to have, like, stat points in certain statistics or certain criteria to use those weapons effectively it just seemed like you could switch weapons on the fly and completely change up your gameplay style so i was playing with two or three different weapons during the beta that was kind of interesting um but some people didn't really like it they thought that it was like kind of a dark souls ripoff and they didn't really find it too um too entertaining so for me it's kind of like i'm on the fence i don't want to drop 60 bucks for a game that I'm going to play one or two sessions, and people are like, wow, it's a Dark, it's a Dark Souls ripoff. The other thing is, there's been a million Dark Souls, like, spin-off ripoff games recently. Um, there was one last month called Remnant that I skipped. There was another one that just came out that I skipped, and now there's this one. So in one month, there's three different... Oh, The Surge 2. The Surge 2 is coming out, I think, this week, or came out this week. And now you got this one. In one month, three different games that are all play like Dark Souls. Like... That's kind of ridiculous. Yeah, I, I, what I'm noticing is everyone wants to be from software, right? Everyone wants to be the company that makes the, gripli the cripplingly hard, difficult games. And what they do is they all make these games and they release them between the From Software releases to try to fill the gap when we're waiting for the next From Software game. So we had Sekiro earlier this year. We probably won't have anything about Elden Ring or a, another Bloodborne for another year or two. So we're going to have a bunch of Dark Souls clones all releasing. Um, and I hate to say it, um, I just don't... It's hard for me to get excited about it. You know what I mean? It is. It's very hard for me to get excited about knockoff games that play like kind of like Dark Souls. Even though some people told me that Remnant... Remnant was really good, and by missing out on it, I really missed out on a great game. It's like, eh, I don't know, man. So, I'm on the fence about Code Vein. The other thing is, like I told you guys, I'm in the midst of playthroughs of Borderlands 3 and Link's Awakening, both of which are going to be probably games that I'm playing two or three more streams of each before I beat them. Like, Link's Awakening, I only have four out of the eight instruments, and I'm eight hours in. So, probably it's going to be another two major sessions. And Borderlands 3, I'd be surprised if you guys told me I was halfway through, because we all know Borderlands is really long. So, you know, if that's the case, okay, then I, you know, I know that I'm going to be playing those at least for another week, So, especially with the special events. I got Ask the King and the Retrospective Marathon coming up this week. So, is it really smart to start playing another game during all of this? Um, so, I don't know. I'm just kind of, I'm on the fence. I want your input. I want to know... From you, the viewing audience, if I played Code Vein, would you guys come out for it? Would you guys be excited to see me play it? Or is this going to come off as a knockoff? Like you guys, a lot of you said during the beta, man, this feels like a Dark Souls knockoff and it doesn't feel as good, so I don't think I really want to see Phil play it. Because it honestly surprised me. During the beta, I was raging because I was playing the challenge stage that's available during the beta. It's kind of like a chalice dungeon in Bloodborne where you go into it and it's very difficult. 
and you need to kind of grind to get through it and kill all the enemies and get to the bosses and stuff. And you guys were like, meh, not very, not very excited. So, if that's the case, then I'm probably just going to skip it. But let's see. I want to get your opinion on this. Okay? Some people right now are saying, I would love Code Vein. And a few other people said, I, I don't want to see Code Vein. So, it seems like a mix. It seems like, just like I'm on the fence, a lot of you guys are on the fence. Like, you can't decide either if the game's any good. Maybe this is one of those games where what we should do is wait, let the game come out, I'll play all my other games that I've been playing, do my own thing, and then let's see within, like, a couple days of it coming out what the common consensus is, if the game's good or not, and if it's worth playing. Because I don't want to jump the gun and play a game that's not very good. The other thing is there's a few games I've skipped over the past couple of months you guys have been interested in seeing me play, and I wouldn't be against playing said games if you guys wanted to see that, okay? That could actually kill some time in early October before new releases come out in the second half of the month. And in addition to that... Not only do I have this Genesis Mini that's going to have 40-plus games on it, this, the, the Nintendo Switch recently released a library of SNES games on it as well that could be, like, time-filler games. So I've got a lot of stuff I could potentially play. That's, certainly, I have no shortage of content that I could be playing and putting out. I just don't know what to play. There's so much available right now, which is good. I would much rather have way more available to play then not enough. You see what I mean? I'd rather have overabundance can't decide versus, damn, I don't know what to play. All right, so we'll see. All right, guys, so there you go. That's the schedule. Roughly, just a, a quick summary. Today, Genesis Mini unboxing, hooking it up, playing initial games. T uh, tonight, Modern Warfare re uh, final nighttime stream because there's not going to be any more. Um... There's not going to be any more about, uh, about the beta. It's done after this weekend, okay? Tomorrow could be more Genesis Mini if you guys like the Genesis Mini stream today. Or we'll probably go back to Borderlands 3, depending. Tomorrow night will be my weekly Minecraft chill stream. I'm off on Tuesday. Wednesday will be whatever I didn't play on Monday, paired with <clears throat> Dragon Quest Builders 2. Thursday is the return of Ask the King. Paired with some Genesis Mini Chill stuff. Later this week, there'll also probably be some classic Street Fighter throwback on the late streams. And the retrospective event is this coming Saturday. Okay? So there you go. Alrighty. Okay, guys. Moving on. The only other thing that I want to say is please continue to nominate horror and spooky-themed games for the upcoming Halloween Marathon. Okay? This Tuesday, I'm going to go out with Kat, and we're going to be looking for Halloween decorations and costumes. But outside of that, I need you guys to nominate games. The more games that are nominated for this event, the better, because in a couple weeks, I'm going to turn the nominations into a poll that you guys will be voting on to determine what games I'll actually be playing during said marathon on Halloween, okay? So head over to the kingofhate.com forums and nominate those games. The more nominated, the better. Okay? All right. So, let us now... Get to the next segment, okay? The next segment is none other than the segment where we talk about Donald Trump for 45 minutes and we get everyone angry. So, Donald Trump today... No, I'm just kidding. We're not doing that. We're going to be doing a gratuitous plug segment that probably gets people even more upset. This is the segment where I tell you guys how you can be supportive of my stream, all right? I've been a content creator for 11 years. I absolutely love what I do for a living. Every day being able to share my, my daily gameplay experiences with all of you and interacting with you wasn't always like that. You know, I did this for two and a half years as a hobby on YouTube before I could even monetize videos. Then I lost my office job and I started monetizing my videos for six years. Then the bubble burst on YouTube and it was no longer viable to make a living on YouTube. So I came over to Twitch and became a full-time streamer. And ever since then, I've been a fun, interactive-style streamer where I talk with you guys and we chat and we have conversations and I give shout-outs. And quite frankly, this is much better than what I used to do. I think today's Genesis mini stream will be so much better because it's interactive than if I was just sitting here isolated recording myself doing something. I really love the interactivity that we have when we do this stuff. <clears throat> to me, it just makes it a lot better, okay? Um, so thank you for that. Thanks for coming out every day and hanging out with me. Thanks for enjoying my streams and, and making this a, a, a fun time. That being said... I almost primarily rely on stream contributions, i.e. crowdfunding, to make ends meet. Without your support during streams, um, I wouldn't be able to do this. Just being very matter-of-fact honest, there's no way that I would be able to continue doing any of this without your support on streams, okay? So, 
I'm about to outline many different ways that you can contribute and help me to continue to keep doing this. All right. However, <clears throat> that being said, please understand something up front. You are not required to contribute on my streams whatsoever. It is not mandatory, nor is it expected. All right. I'm happy to just have people come and hang out with me on a daily basis. I really am. I like the fact that after 11 freaking years of doing this, you guys still care about me and my opinions. Some people have said, Phil, I could see you doing this indefinitely. Not to say that you could always do it as your job, but you could probably do this indefinitely because people really seem interested in you as a person and your opinions. And like, that's cool to know. Um, I don't, I don't really feel that way. I think that eventually people will stop caring about me. I'm just being honest, but that's what just happens with everything in life. Right. But, <clears throat> um, I like the fact that people still care right now. All right. So, uh, thank you for that. Um, come by, hang out, have fun. That's what it's all about. But if you can go above and beyond, and if you can contribute, it is greatly appreciated because I do need this, your support in order to keep everything going here. All right. So if you enjoy the stuff that I do, please consider contributing in one of the following ways. Hold on while I turn on my fan because I forgot to turn on my fan in the office and it's getting a little stuffy in here. Hold on. There we go. All right. So the first thing you can do is check out my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash dark side Phil. We're running into the final week of the month here. So it's your last chance really for the next week to contribute to my Patreon before the monthly campaign expires. When you contribute to my Patreon, you earn personal perks for the level that you contribute, all right? One of the perks is getting your questions answered on Ask the King in depth during a segment just for patrons. That's coming up this Thursday, so just an example of one of the many perks you can get for being a patron, all right? So please give it a look, patreon.com forward slash darksidephil, and thank everyone who does contribute there. I have a Teespring store where I sell all kinds of merchandise, primarily t-shirts, but there are other things there as well. Please give that a look, teespring.com forward slash stores forward slash DSP Gaming, and thanks to anyone who buys something from there. Um, okay. Um, also, as you guys know, the big way to jump in and contribute and get interactivity with me would be to contribute during a live stream. So that would mean either cheering with bits or subscribing to my channel or tipping me today. If you do any of those three things, I will give you a live shout out during the stream. Um, great way to get interactivity with me or to start a conversation or to get a question answered, etc. All right. And it's the primary way that we basically interact during the stream. All right. And I appreciate that. So as you can see, there's many ways you can get recognition. There's a, a stream stats leaderboard at the top of the screen where the top cheerer and top tipper will actually get recognition there. There is a integrated uh, cheering leaderboard here on Twitch, where the top co uh, cheering contributors, the top 10 of the week, actually get prominent viewing. And by the way, I should call this out, last chance to get up on that leaderboard because it's the end of the week, and that resets overnight on Sunday. As of tomorrow morning, that'll be at zero. So la absolute last chance for you if you want to get in on the fact that you can get at the top 10 cheer of the week. Today would be the day to cheer, okay? Um... So, yeah, many ways for you to get recognition. Uh, but please understand, there's a certain ground rules that I have to follow here on Twitch, as well as my own kind of personal rules that I have for the stream. So let me outline those briefly. First of all, please understand that I am streaming on Twitch.tv, which is a live streaming service that has its own terms of service that I must abide by. So I will be abiding by all rules and regulations of Twitch TV. And please be respectful of that. Number two, I have my own kind of mantra that I go by here on the stream. Where essentially, what I say is I want to have a chill stream where we can all relax, we can have a good time, we don't bring in drama and negativity, we don't get argumentative, we basically try to make it as fun of a stream as possible for everyone without turning it into some kind of a drama fest. Alright, I just want people to be able to come to my streams and chill and relax, see my honest reactions to whatever I'm doing on stream for that day, have some fun interactivity with me and other stream chatters, and not feel like the, the whole thing's going to explode into drama and crap. Let's face it, you all have real drama in your own lives. You don't need that on a gameplay stream or a, a rare stream like today where I'm doing an unboxing and exploration of a, a console. You don't need drama, right? And that's what I try to keep out of my streams, which means we usually don't discuss topics that are controversial, like politics or religion and stuff like that. Unless there's a game that actually has that as a topic of the story, we almost never address it because it always brings up arguments and people getting angry at each other. 
It's just as a rule of thumb, it's something that we don't do. I also don't bring up people who insult me. I don't bring up people who steal my content. You know, the people who basically try to make a living riding on my coattails because they have no creative talent of their own, so they have to steal mine and make fun of it in order to make a living. Well, those people get ignored because guess what? I have positive and fun stuff to put out. All right? You want to talk about them? You can do it outside of my channel. That's fine. But we're not going to derail the entire stream um, and get it into d topics of discussion that are just going to cause arguments and negativity and toxicity, etc. Okay? So please understand that I have absolutely no obligation whatsoever to respond to anything on my stream. Whether you just address me in the stream chat, whether you contribute in a certain way. I am going to try to give a shout out to everyone who contributes today. But we always have people who try to derail the stream, who try to bring the stream in a negative direction, or try to basically violate one of my rules, and I'm not going to play that game, all right? And please get that, because there's some people who try to contribute, and then after the fact bring up, oh, I contributed today, but Phil didn't respond to me, so he broke a contract. There's no contract. It doesn't exist, all right? When you contribute to a stream, you willingly contribute, and there's no contract that exists between the streamer and the person contributing. You willingly gave to a stream... End of story, all right? So people try, it's hilarious. I absolutely love it when people like tip me a dollar and then they try to dispute it with PayPal and they're like, he didn't give me a shout out. It's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Where is there a written contract that I owe you anything for a dollar, you idiot? So <laughs> I just love, I find it hilarious um, that these dumb kids try to do this stuff. But regardless, we're going to have a good time. Please understand if there are people who contribute and I don't respond, more than likely, it's because they are trying to derail the stream. Although, honestly, every once in a while, I do miss something, honestly. So, if you feel that's the case, feel free to call it out, and I'll give it a look, okay? All right, guys. Now, last but not least, the best way you can help me right now is by tipping me. Tipping me allows me to use those funds towards whatever I need to use them for. Right now, I got, uh, in fact, um, t uh, not today. I'm trying to think when I can do it. In the next couple of days, I got to pay a pretty big bill, um... That I'm backed up on. A bill that I've been owing for two months and haven't paid on. Which I have the money for it. So a lot of your tips that have been coming in have paid for things recently. For example, Link's Awakening I'm paying because I, I'm playing because I, I could afford it. Because you guys have been tipping me very generously. And now I'm going to pay a bill with it. Like That's what all that money goes to. FYI. You know, it goes straight to what I need it to go to for the business. For my personal finances. You know, So thank you. To anyone who does tip me today, when you tip me, those are funds I can use immediately for stuff. And it's very important because in the next couple of weeks, in particular the first week of the month, all my bills come due. So tipping me now is going to get me ready for that time. Please consider tipping me if at all you can. I still appreciate other things like I already mentioned. Patreon, Teespring, cheering, subbing, all great. But those I see long-term benefits from. Tipping is short-term benefits that I can use right away. So please consider tipping me. All right. There's two ways you can do it. You can either look below the stream. There's a tips jar button you can click on. Or you can type exclamation point tip into the stream chat to bring you to my PayPal tips page. All right. And a couple things about tipping. First of all, you can you can actually use your name if you want to shout out. Or you can just go anonymously. Or you can make up a name if you want to protect your identity. All right. You also don't need a PayPal account to tip me. You can just use a debit or credit card, much like anything else on the internet. Uh, you have that freedom. Okay. Fair enough. All right. Now let's get to shout outs. For those who have contributed, and we'll start updating the leaderboards, etc. And uh, let's go ahead and get the get the show on the road, okay? So we actually started off overnight. I received a 1,000-bit cheer from Tantamounter. Thank you very much, Tantamounter, for the 1,000-bit cheer. That is much appreciated. Um, especially the fact that I'm not here overnight, but you kept me in mind and you cheered. Thank you for that. And by the way, one thing I should say before we get to the shout-outs... September here on Twitch is almost at an end. Almost. But not yet. That means for the next couple of days, you guys are still able to do a few promotional things that help out streamers a little bit more. First of all, if you've never been subscribed to a channel at all on Twitch, or if you were gifted a sub that's expiring, if you subscribe to the channel, it's half price for the next two days, but only two more days, okay? So your absolute last chance here... For you to jump on the bandwagon of September, if you want a discounted sub to any channel on Twitch, you got to do it in the next couple of days. In addition, if you cheer today, all right, please use the cheer mode Subway. If you use the Subway cheer mode, it gives 10% bonus bits to the streamer for free. It costs you nothing, all right? It's a great way to be supportive to a streamer. 
uh, for minimal extra work on your behalf. All right, so please consider doing that if at all you are going to cheer. And Tana Mater in particular did the subway cheer mo, which is why it reminded me. Oh yeah, I should I should call this out. Okay. All right. So thank you, Tana Mater, who overnight did a thousand bit cheer. I appreciate that. Uh, Rob tipped me five bucks right before the stream started today, actually. So the stream hadn't started yet. And he said, enjoy the console, dude. It was my pleasure to bless you. Yes. So since Rob now has gone out of his way to say this, I can say thank you, Rob, for the console. It was Rob who actually uh, gifted me this console. And boy, was it a big save. Because if you guys remember, someone during the summer had already told me they were getting me this. So I had plans to do it. I had promoted it. I had talked about it for weeks and weeks. And then that guy completely backed out, which is kind of messed up. But it is what it is. Who knows, you know, if it was personal reasons or whatever. I'm sure there was a good reason. But... It sucks that that happened, and then Rob came to the rescue and said, no, I, I still want Phil to cover this. So thank you, Rob, for donating the PlayStation. For, uh, the PlayStation? What the hell? Thank you, Rob, for gifting the Genesis Mini. Why the hell did I say the PlayStation? That, not the PlayStation Mini. That thing was a huge failure. <laughs> okay. So thank you, Rob. Now, we actually get started now with people who contributed while the stream was on. So we start off with Fat Mr. Bo, who tipped me a dollar. He says, Phil, I caught up with the first five parts of Link's Awakening. In your opinion, do you find it too easy so far? The hero mode option makes enemies drop no hearts and can't be found in grass. And enemies do two times damage. Would you suggest this for experienced players? Well, I had never played this game before. So when I had started playing it, I didn't know what to expect. Um, but I'll be honest, yeah, I do think it's on the easier side. And the reason being, I think it was by design... Because this game was on the Game Boy. <laughs> oh. Whew. Okay. Sorry about that, everyone. What a sneeze. That came out of nowhere. Um. Whoo. But anyway. <laughs> Jesus. Um. Yeah, I think that this game was intended for people to play on a handheld. Which, by default, they know. Playing games on, like, a Game Boy or a handheld. Um is a lot more difficult than playing on, say, a console with a, with a full-on gamepad and playing it sitting down in front of a TV versus, oh, it's a handheld where I might be in a situation where things are moving around and the controls aren't as good. So I think by design, all right, the game was made to be more easy than standard Zelda games, okay? I think that's why they added Hero Mode because they realized that for people who wanted a challenge, they might say the game's too easy. Now, I didn't know that. I didn't play it before, so I'm playing it on standard difficulty. I'm, you know, about halfway through the game. And, yeah, I, I would honestly say that it seems like, for the most part, it's pretty easy. Um, I haven't even died to a boss yet. Um, in fact, I don't think I died at all yet. No, I didn't, because you know what it is. I have fairy revives. I have fairies in bottles. So even if when I ran out of hearts, the fairy would revive me. Um, so I haven't even died yet. But not to say that it won't get harder. I'm only halfway through the game. Um... I would recommend, if you're looking for a big challenge, yes, play Link's Awakening on Hero Mode. But I'm playing it on the standard difficulty the game developers intended it to be played on by default. That's why I'm doing that. And I'm not changing it on the fly in the middle of the playthrough now. We're just going to leave it where it is. Okay? All right. Big Sloppy Meat tipped me a dollar. says, can I get unbanned? I feel this is harsh. No, you cannot be unbanned because you were already unbanned, and then you acted up again. You didn't learn your lesson. And it's one thing if someone you know, misbehaves on a stream and learns, apologizes sincerely, learns, and comes back. I'll give you a perfect example, Rumpelstiltskin. <clears throat> he had had a lot of issues with the moderation staff here and was getting moderated a bunch. I had an honest conversation with the guy about relaxing, and now he's been in here for about a month without any issues, okay? So that's a perfect example of someone who kind of learns, relaxes a little bit, and then everyone's happy. Big sloppy me, you just don't learn. You had your chance, you got unbanned, you came back immediately, you got banned again. So, tough titties. Grow the hell up. I don't even know what else to say. It's your own fault that you're banned. I tried, I stuck up for you, I unbanned you, and then you got banned again. So, congrats. Captain Caveman did a 100-bit cheer. Thank you very much for that. And that gets the cheering started for today. So let's get Captain Caveman up on the leaderboard. With a 100-bit cheer. Thank you, sir. Cliffy Biro, gifted a sub to Wings of Redemption. Well, congratulations to Wings of Redemption. I'm sure that you absolutely use that sub all the time. Uh, I mean, it's some of the best emotes on Twitch, obviously. My face, I mean, who wouldn't want to see my face 
all over their Twitch chat. I can't imagine a single person who wouldn't. So obviously you'll make advantage of that. And thank you, Quiffy Bureau, for the support. CNN took me $5. I said, this is just in. DSP is a... I don't even know who these people are. So I'm not even going to say that. But thank you for the $5 joke tip, uh, whoever this was. And it's political, by the way, which I don't talk about politics on my stream. So I'm not even going to read that. But thank you for the $5 tip regardless. Okay, then. Okay. Uh, frog in my foot. Cheering and said, a new Harvard study came out saying... Sitting for six hours a day with no exercise to balance it out increases your chance of early death. I hope you will consider working some exercises to your daily routine. I work and go to school full-time, and I still manage it. Good for you. Thanks for the tip. The Children's Millions tipped a dollar. It says, time for me to get over strep throat. Could we expect an N64 Classic extreme if that rumored product comes to fruition? I'd love to do it. <clears throat> I absolutely would love to do an N64 Classic stream and or N64 Classics coverage if it comes out. So let's see what happens. There's actually, I think there's TurboGrafx-16 Mini in the works as well. So, I guess the directly dependent on how this goes could determine future content, right? Like, if you guys really like my coverage of the Genesis Mini, then maybe this would open up the possibility when other mini retro consoles come out in the future for me to cover those as well. All right? Lil Emo Lexi Conway Pimp. What the fuck? That's my response to this and to this person's message. Thanks for the dollar tip. Okay, great. Let's continue. I'm not even reading anything you said because it's really stupid. All right. Oh, shit. I screwed this up. Okay, Daz Feeder has subscribed to the channel for 11 months. Thank you, Daz Feeder, for 11 months of support. Glitch Crazed. Subscribed to the channel for 26 months. Thank you very much to Glitch Crazed. I appreciate that. That guy with the glasses. Tipped five dollars. No, it is not the real that guy with the glasses, but he says I've been around the block for as long as you. How the fuck is this a gameplay stream? You're just talking out of your ass about everything other than Genesis titles. You're right, and guess what? It's not even tagged as a gameplay stream. You don't know what you're talking about. Stupid, 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 stupid. But thanks for the five dollar tip. I appreciate that. Uh, Hodor Tar just cheered and said one streamer mentioned. He has a secret deal with YouTube detractor channels in order to get revenue share from all the drama videos, and if they don't comply, he copyrights them. Do you have a similar deal? Otherwise, I don't get why DSP troll channels still exist. No, I don't, and no, I'm not talking about that. As I already said, it's against the rules, so stop it. Angry Joe Show. This is not the real Angry Joe Show, by the way. Tip me $5, and again, it's the same idiot who impersonated that guy with the glasses saying that, why am I talking on a stream that's listed as a gameplay stream? It's not listed as a gameplay stream. You're a moron. Thanks for the $5 tip. Moving on, Ace cheered and said, all the games that you played, which had the most emotional ending for you? Um, man, I would say Mass Effect 1, because it was the first, like, sci-fi epic game I ever played. When the first time I beat it, I really loved the ending. Um, <clears throat> to the Moon was one that I teared up at the end. Um, the original season of The Walking Dead from Telltale, at the very end when you say goodbye to Lee, that also I teared up for. There's been many other games over the years as well, but you guys would be more apropos to tell me what you remember me getting emotional about because I don't remember, okay? <clears throat> All right. Then I received a $5 troll tip from Charlie Sheen who insulted me in something else that has nothing to do with truth about this stream. So I'm just going to laugh again a third time with the same person probably tipped me three times because they're a brain-dead idiot and couldn't read that the stream does not say it's a gameplay stream. What a dunce. Bugged Box Mechanics tipped me a dollar said... We'll unbox the Genesis, drop it on the floor, and blame the world that it's not working. Laughing out loud. Okay. I don't remember that ever happening on any of my content whatsoever. Thanks for the hypothetical, and thanks for the dollar. Hilarious. Um, tax Bussy? The fuck does that mean? Tip me a dollar, so I can't wait to see the unboxing. Well, thank you for the dollar tip. I don't know what the hell your name means. The Otaku Fan tip me a dollar, says, I remember you unboxing the Ouya... In 2013, how did you know about it? What was your overall thoughts about the console? Um, I didn't know about it. Someone had contacted me about it <clears throat> to tell me that it existed and had sent me one. I didn't even know what the Ouya was until someone had contacted me. I think actually what had happened it was a question on one of my Ask the King uh, episodes. Okay. I'm pretty sure it was one of my Ask the King episodes where... Someone had asked me, are you going to get the Ouya? Do you know about it? I was like, I don't know what the hell it is. Never heard of it. And then 
because of that, someone just sent me one and said, here it is, cover, you can cover it, please. We'd love to see you cover it. Um, so there you go. Uh, Last Rambo did 150-bit cheer. That actually makes uh, him the top cheer of the month, okay? So let me go ahead and get him up there. Did I say last, biggest cheer of the month? I meant biggest cheer of the stream. Oops. <laughs> that didn't mean biggest cheer of the month. Excuse me. That was a mis misspeaking there. All right. So Last Rambo says the following. Is it true only YouTubers that get millions of views per month could do YouTube as a full-time job? If so, why not strive to have a million views so you can get double income from both YouTube and Twitch? Well, all I can tell you is from my personal experience, all right? What I can tell you is, if you get millions upon millions of views, okay, um, millions upon millions of views, you can make a living doing YouTube. Um, I would say, I mean, geez, I'm trying to really think hard here. When the last time it was viable for me to make a living just off of YouTube revenue? <clears throat> I mean, it was probably 2015. It was really, I could make a living on just on YouTube until people hit me with all those false copyright strikes in 2015. I would say that was the thing that kind of broke the dam, per se. And then it was like just nonsense after nonsense, whether it was... I couldn't get ad valid, valid ads on my videos anymore. I couldn't get people to come to my channel because I wasn't showing up in YouTube search anymore. Like, I could name a million things that happened negative as a result of those false copyright strikes against DSP Gaming. But that was really it. Um, I lost tons of views as a result of that. Um, so I would say... And I'm trying to remember now. I Honestly, I couldn't even tell you how many views I had back then. There's no way I could tell you. I know it was in the millions. It was probably... Three to five million views a month. That was enough just on ad revenue alone to make a living. But what you got to remember, that was 2015. That was before YouTube's adpocalypse happened in 2017. Okay? It's very viable. Or it's very possible that today bringing in five million views a month isn't even enough because the ads pay so little and you can't get ads on your videos anymore. Plus, there's rampant demonetization and rampant content ID claims all the time now that didn't used to happen. So you're talking, you know, a, it's a different time now. Um, <clears throat> so I can't even, I, honestly, last Rambo, I couldn't answer your question because I don't know in the, mod in the modern day if it's anything like what it used to be. All I can tell you is, you know, four plus years ago, um, when I was bringing in those crazy views every month on YouTube, I was able to make a living doing it until people struck me with all those false copyright strikes and pretty much destroyed my channel's profitability. Okay. Now, what you're saying here is, why not strive to have a million views so you can have, do YouTube and Twitch as a full-time... First of all, I generally bring in around a million views. Sometimes it varies and it's under. It all depends on what I'm playing, honestly. But in general, my channel can still bring in between 500,000 to a million views a month. Um, even though I put zero effort into it. I, I purposely put no effort into any of my uploads on YouTube... Because I just don't care about it anymore. <clears throat> um, because it's not worth it. In my opinion, being someone who's now done YouTube for 11 years, it is not worth it to put any time or effort into YouTube. YouTube does not care about the people who upload to the site. They don't care about those who have created content and allowed them to make profit for the past 11 years. They just don't give a shit about anybody but themselves. That's why they only have legal protections for themselves so they don't get sued. They don't care if someone steals your content. They don't care if someone breaks the law or you know, your copyright violation. They don't care. Unless you sue them, they're never going to do anything because they don't give a shit. They only care about themselves. Unlike Twitch, Twitch actually has guidelines in place that they actually enforce, which is amazing. It's like night and day from YouTube. It really is different from YouTube over here on Twitch. Um, so I don't care about YouTube. I don't. So the truth of the matter is, I could bust my, I could completely bust my ass making great videos, highly edited content, really work my butt off to make good YouTube content and get nothing for it. I can tell you that because it happened to me. In 2016, I worked my ass off to make a channel called KO Gaming. And for about eight months, the channel was very popular. It had v videos with millions of views. It was bringing me thousands of dollars of revenue over the course of that time. And then YouTube just decided one day we're going to demonetize everything. For no reason. There was no valid reason to do it. They just did it. They demonetized all the videos on the channel, including the one that was making me the most money. Um, 
for no reason. And when I disputed it, they essentially said, oh, we have no good reason. But if you manually dispute every single one, we'll re manually review and see. Some of them, they did reinstate ads. Some of them, they never did. So it got to the point where I just didn't give a fuck anymore. I'm like, well, if I work my ass off for you, and at any point you could just tell me I can't make money anymore for no valid reason. First of all, it's illegal. It is illegal. But I can't sue you because I don't have no money to do it. So I guess I'm just going to say fuck you and do something else. And then when the adpocalypse happened in early 2017, I said, that's it. I'm done with this site. Um, <clears throat> so there you go. Um, I had enough. And that's it. Like, I, There's no reason, Last Rambo, for me to put insane amounts of time and effort to put videos out on YouTube that at any moment they could demonetize, they could blacklist my channel, they could fucking content ID me. There's a million things on YouTube that are so fucked up and illegal. They're plainly illegal. But if YouTube got sued in a class action lawsuit, they would be absolutely fucking destroyed by. But no one does it because we all need YouTube to still exist, right? To put our content on. <clears throat> so you let it fly and I say, fine then. You're going to treat me like that? I don't care about you anymore. I'm just going to go ahead and just upload as an archive to YouTube and put no effort into it. Because if I did, chances are nothing would change. If I actually busted my ass, probably nothing would change. I probably wouldn't see any increase in views or anything. There's no point in doing it. I tried it with KO Gaming for eight months. I saw success. And then YouTube chose to destroy the channel so they could go fuck themselves. And I'm not going to worry about it anymore. I'm just going to focus on Twitch. Okay? Amazing tip me a dollar saying I sneezed and sprayed all over my laptop keys and hands. Don't go wash my hands clean up and nothing. That's right. In fact, I've also shoved my hand on my own ass. And pull, I pulled turds out of my butt live on stream. Didn't you ever see that? No, you didn't? Oh, you must not pay attention then. I mean, yeah. Hold on. Let me, let me, every time that I cough or sneeze, let me completely freeze my stream to completely disinfect my office. What the fuck are you? Weirdo. Jessica Tim cheered. I said, super stoked for the mini today. Keep going strong, bro. Thank you, Jessica. Person tipped me a dollar saying, how can I reconcile not paying bills but buying games and Halloween costumes. Uh, because I need to buy games and things for the streams to make money to pay bills. This is pretty common, like, in a business. When you operate your own business, you would understand you have to spend money to make money. There's, you can't just make money out of nothing. You have to actually spend money to make money. So, if I need to buy games to play on stream to make money to pay bills, buying the games takes priority over paying the bill that can wait. Or else I can't make the money to pay the bill. Are you stupid? Yes, you are stupid. Okay, let's continue on. Frog in my foot uh, cheered again and basically is insulting me. So let's go ahead and ban them permanently from the stream. There you go. They're per now, per oh, they're already permanently banned. Someone was already on that shit. So I wasn't even paying attention. I was, you know, answering another uh, contribution and someone was already on that shit. Good stuff. All right, Fox News tipped me $5 saying, I don't know my own senators from Connecticut or Washington and basically talking about politics. I don't talk about politics on the stream, so thanks very much for the $5 contribution. I appreciate that, and let's move on. Godzilla tipped $6 and became the top tipper of the day. And it says, put me up on the leaderboard. I, indeed, I will, Godzilla. Thank you very much, Godzilla, for the $6 tip. Biggest tip of the day so far. And that gets us up to $40 in tips. Thank you, thank you. All right, continuing on. M5NSX did a 100-bit cheer. Good to see you, M5NSX. He says, do you think this is going to be the best and most intense unboxing you've ever done? Oh, it's very intense. Let me tell you. The blast processing alone of the Genesis um, could definitely, definitely, definitely have an issue here. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to be able to handle it. It could blow It could blow the stream up. It could destroy everyone's internet connections. Who knows? The blast processing is very hard to contain, let me tell you. For those who don't know, the reason that I'm saying the blast processing so many times is because it doesn't exist. It was something that Sega actually advertised about the Genesis that actually physically didn't exist in the console, but they constantly said it did, which is absolutely hilarious. They just made something up for PR and marketing that wasn't in there. So it was, it was blatant false advertising. Um, but it worked. A lot of people bought the Genesis based on something that wasn't in the console, which is pretty funny. But anyway, I think this will be fun. I think it's going to be a fun stream. Uh, I got a dollar tip from someone asking something absolutely ridiculous with a name that's absolutely ridiculous. And since it's so ridiculous, I'm going to say thanks for the dollar tip, ridiculous. Let's move on. Um, Eternal Napalm, what's going on, man? You did 100-bit cheer. 
He says, I'm glad you're loving Link's Awakening. The remake is gorgeous. It has been a wonderful trip down memory lane. As you go forward, remember that your one-on-one -on -one conversation with Merritt on the beach where she wonders what lies beyond the sea. Yes, I remember that. I do remember that. So I'll have to keep that in mind then. Oh my god. <laughs> Another name that's religious. It's actually a religious name. Timmy $5 and is now talking about women and Jews. <laughs> yes, I'm definitely going to bring this up. No, I'm not. Thanks for the $5 tip. And then a dollar tipper is now claiming that my incident in 2016 is the reason why my YouTube channel isn't popular anymore. Even though in reality, my YouTube channel dipped in popularity way before the 2016 incident. It was because of the copyright strikes the year before. So nice try, jackass, on trying to rewrite history for your own be benefit to try to say that I'm ultimately responsible for everything I'm not. Although I have made many mistakes over the years, admittedly. And I've done many things wrong over the years, things I've said and done that are embarrassing now that I look back at them. And yes, absolutely, people have been turned off to my content over the years because of things I've done. I'm not ignorant, and I'm not going to say that's not the case. Ultimately, what you're saying is completely factually false, and you are an idiot. So thanks for the dollar tip, idiot. Okay. <clears throat> so, very nice. Uh, thank you all. Oh, hold on. Jadif just tipped me $3. He says, when's the next Borderlands 3 stream? I thought it was for today, but you switched to your schedule. Thanks. Yeah, it was going to be today, but then the Genesis Mini showed up. Like, the, the Mini, I didn't even know when the Mini was showing up. Um, and then I got an update saying it was coming today. Uh, well, it was coming yesterday, so I put this stream for today. Uh, I'm definitely playing Borderlands 3 this week. It could be as early as tomorrow. Or if it's not tomorrow, then it's going to be Wednesday. Because I'm off on Tuesday. So it's either tomorrow or Wednesday, depending on how the Genesis Mini stuff goes today. Okay. Fair enough. We'll see. And I, it is going to be in the rotation at least one or two times a week you'll be seeing Borderlands 3. This week may be a little tight because... Um, I'm doing not only Ask the King on Thursday, but also the Retrospective Marathon on Saturday. So just by default, that's two days where I'm not doing standard gameplay streams. Um, but it will return. It will absolutely, you know, it's not a playthrough I'm dropping or nothing. Don't worry. I, I like the game a lot, and we're going to keep going. Uh, it will continue this week, Jada. Thank you for the $3 tip. Then I received a dollar troll tip that I'm going to ignore. Thank you very much for the dollar troll tip. Troll, keep on trolling. All right. <clears throat> so, everybody. Thank you very much for being patient. What I'd now like to do is give a shout out to the top 10 cheering contributors of the week. All right, let's do that. While everyone spams the stream chat with numbers for absolutely no valid reason, I don't think anyone even knows why they're doing it. Let's give a shout out to the top cheers of the week because this is the last opportunity to do so because this will reset overnight. Okay, in 10th place, we've got Handicap Gaming ER. In 9th place, Bent Boxer. 8th place this week is K-Styles 1998. 7th place, The Real Flash. 6th place, M5NSX. 5th place, Unfazed Shade. 4th place, WWE Sniper, 1234. 2nd place, Baby Man Gaming 321 who I believe he changed his name to the OG Rascal now. Survive Sweet Treats is in 2nd, and sitting there in 1st, Tanta Mounter, who did a lot of overnight cheering this week, so thank you for that. <clears throat> Alright, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that is it. Looks like everything is dried up. I would now ask people to please stop spamming the stream chat, because in just a moment... The actual unboxing will occur of the Genesis Mini. And so we obviously don't want that to, uh, you know, be now no one can talk or anything. So I'm just going to give everyone a minute to stop spamming before I try to take action here. Everyone, please stop spamming. All right. And uh, we're going to get started. Fair enough. <clears throat> no quick break. I don't have to use the restroom today. I don't. We could just get right into the news. <laughs> We can get right into the news. No, no, we're not going into the news. We're going right into the content here. Um, Nugget of Truth just tipped me a dollar and asked, do I consider taking antidepressant medication to help with in-game rage and dealing with trolls? No, what I can tell you is this. This is being very honest. You know, I've been, I've had ups and downs over the years, and there was a point there for a couple of years where I was pretty depressed because of the stuff that was going on. Um, Now, you know, my life with Kat, and Jasper is very positive and fun and amazing. And I really don't have those negative feelings that much anymore. Every once in a while, they still creep up. Because depression, that's what happens. Every once in a while, you'll have a bad day. For some reason, you feel like shit. I had one of those last week. But in general, it doesn't really affect me that much. Uh, I don't let it. And I haven't really needed anything. Which has been great. You know, better to not be on something. So... Heaving Girth... Did a 50-bit cheers? Did you have to retire from the FGC because of your back injury? 
not necessarily. It was a factor. It was definitely a factor in it because my back injury was not allowing me to drive to tournaments in my area anymore and get the practice in that I felt I needed. In fact, that last couple of years that I was really trying hard to get good uh, competitively at Super Turbo, I wanted to travel more and I couldn't because my back was fucked up. Um, and it was becoming to the point where now if I wanted to go to a tournament or whatever, like I, re I remember the last few tournaments that I attended at Tokyo Game Action, which was in Rhode Island, when I lived in Connecticut, normally that would have been something I would have just driven. I would have just driven there a few hour drive, not a problem. But I couldn't do it anymore because of my back. So I ended up spending a ton of money on a train, getting back and forth and everything. And it just got to the point where it wasn't viable for me to do it anymore. I was like, dude, this is like so much money and, and investment now to do it. Because I can't drive, you know, on the highway or nothing because my back was so fucked up. Um, it was a factor. Now, it wasn't the, necessarily the 100% factor, but it was definitely a factor. Um, I, I can actually tell you the moment when I decided I really didn't want to do it anymore. And it actually was during my YouTube career. It was actually during the first couple of years of my YouTube time when I was putting up videos on YouTube. And I went to, um, was it final round? I want to say it was final round at Atlanta. Yeah, it was. It was final round in Atlanta. And no, no, no. Yeah, I was. Oh, shit. Well, there was a tournament in Philly as well. God, I can't. Now I'm having a brain fart. I really am having a brain fart. Uh. It was final round in Atlanta. Yeah. Because early. All right. Now I now I definitely remember. So I had. I had gone to a tournament in Philadelphia and had planned on doing well. I was going to really try hard to play in Marvel. This was when Marvel vs. Capcom 3 had just released, okay? And I was planning to try to play at a high level and try to do well in this tournament. And I hurt my neck. And the I hurt my neck so bad that I had sh numbness and shooting pain in my right hand. In particular, I couldn't even feel my thumb. And I went to this tournament in Philadelphia... And I was trying to play. I couldn't even feel when I was pressing buttons with my thumb. So during a game, like I was playing in a tournament and I was accidentally doing moves and things because I was hitting the button. I couldn't even tell I was hitting it. And that was kind of like, damn, that's really fucked up. Like, I, how am I going to play? I can't feel nothing. And then I think it was within the next month, I went to final round in Atlanta. And I had a lot of fun playing Super Turbo on a cabinet. But when I went to play, again, Marvel 3, the same thing was happening. Where, like, I was getting such numbness and pain in my hand when I was trying to play the game that I was like, I, this is like a waste of time. And I forfeit. I actually forfeit all my tournament matches when I went to final round in Atlanta. No, not a final round in Atlanta. That was a... Wait, now I can't remember. I seriously can't remember. Was it final round or was it... No, it was Philly. Because I remember Big, Big E, Eric... I, I had donated a bunch of stuff to be used in the tournament, but I just stayed in my hotel room the whole tournament. And I, I recorded um, I recorded a game. I recorded Dragon Age. Dragon Age 2. Now it's all coming back to me. I had recorded Dragon Age 2 in my room and uploaded to YouTube instead of fucking playing in the tournament because my hand was so fucked up. Yeah. So that was it was a combination of me feeling that there was just too much time and money put into it that I didn't feel that it was uh, vi viable to keep doing it. And the fact that I was having physical problems. I mean, my back was fucked up. My arm and neck were fucked up. Because I really feel I hurt my neck because of my back. You know, that's what I think. Once you have a back injury, it just continuously causes problems with your body. And probably I was overcompensating for my back injury with my neck. And then I hurt my neck. So it, that year, whatever year that was, I want to say it was like 2010 maybe. I don't know. I just decided that's enough. Like, I'm not going to travel. I'm not going to play in tournaments anymore. There's no point because even if I try my hardest, it looks like my body's not holding out anymore. And quite frankly, at that time, I had everything going for me on YouTube. Like, people wanted me to be putting up YouTube videos. People were actually angry at me for traveling to, to Street Fighter tournaments because they were like, why are you wasting time with that when you could be putting out hot new game playthroughs? So it was kind of a combination of all those factors. And I decided that I was just not going to do it anymore. Okay, I mean, when you go to a tournament, you spend all this time and money to go to a tournament and go and, and, you know, have a hotel room for yourself and you spend the entire time in the hotel room recording Dragon Age instead of playing fighting games. I'm pretty sure that's an indication you're pretty much done with fighting games. Okay. All right. Um, let's see here. Well, 
I received a $7 tip from someone whose name I'm not going to put up on the leaderboard who's saying political things, so I ignore that. Punch you in the jeans tip me $5. Um, is now talking about my incident. Not going to talk about that. So, thanks for the tip, but not going there. Um, common sense to me a dollar says, why can't I just start the stream like a normal streamer? Because people are contributing and I have to give shout outs for the contributions. That's why. So there you go. So that's, uh, what? That's, uh, seven, 12, 13 more dollars in tips. Thank you guys. Thank you very much for the support. Last Rambo cheered again. And he said, I have an idea for a sub goal, an online fighting game marathon. We can nominate games like MVC one, two, and Street Fighter four, etc." See, I'm okay with that. The problem is... If I did that, more than likely it would fail. And the reason I say that is because those games aren't really actively played online anymore. Like, I love Marvel vs. Capcom 1. I'm one of the best players on the planet in that game. No exaggeration. I was in the final tournament for it, and I placed top 5. Um, and I love the game. But no one plays it, you know? Like, I wouldn't be able to find any competition in that game if I looked for it. Same thing with Marvel 2. Like, these are games that they had console versions that were accepted as like this is the popular console version but those games died years and years ago so i would do this special event go to play people and no one would be there <laughs> so it's not going to work sadly um the green giant tipped me a dollar says when you play Mega Man wily wars on the genesis mini if you beat all three Mega Man games you unlock a mini game called wily tower with original robot monsters only in wily wars oh yeah see i don't know anything about the wily wars at all so <clears throat> I'm excited. I know it was an exclusive version of Mega Man made just for the Genesis. I never played it. So I'm excited to check it out and figure out what it is. If it's just a collection of older games or if it has new content. So it sounds to me what you're saying is I beat some of the content that's there. That there's new exclusive content to the game. That sounds cool. I definitely want to do that. So. Heaven Girth cheers says, thanks for the extensive answer. Positive interactions, my dude. M5NSX cheers says, my knuckles are white from gripping the seat in anticipation. And Jessica Tim cheers says, brother Phil, the mini is waiting. I agree. I had to just respond to all these uh, questions and contributions, but I think we've got there. We got through it. Let's very quickly check sub count. <clears throat> We're at 590 subs, which means we lost a subscriber. It's awful. It's terrible. It's world-ending news. Sorry about that, everyone, but I think now we can continue on. What do you think? All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, let us end the pre-stream. And let us begin with the Genesis Mini unboxing coverage. Does that sound good? I hope so. All right, let's do this. 